Hello guys and girls and welcome to another video. My name is Rodgon and today we're going to be doing things a little bit different. It's going to be quite interesting. I'm going to be taking an actual video that you're seeing on screen and I'm going to be walking you guys through the process of everything that happens on in the video. So I'm going to be, you know, just, it's going to be slightly sped up. It's going to be about like a third, like, of the it's gonna be sped up times three so I'm going to bit try to talk a little bit fast so you guys can actually keep uh, like you know through the design process I'm gonna try to talk about what was going through my head and what I'm going through and then then you guys can actually like maybe like pick point like like everything that's going through my head and then you guys can actually break this down and you know pick apart what I was doing so while well, we're gonna start playing the video right now okay so right now i'm opening up the file that i'm going to be using as your template a uh, little rt right here i size it up and i double click on the layer tab right here and the moment that you double click on the layer tab you get the layer options and you're able to set it as a template and that allows you to have it like slightly ghosted i made a new layer on top of that one and at this point i start tracing the image I go from having the solid, you know, like doing it with a solid color to changing it to a stroke by just clicking that little arrow on the little side right there. And then at this point, I'm just going to be using the drawing as a very loose template. I'm not going to be like completely strict about what I'm drawing or what I'm tracing. Um, as you can see, I'm just going to go ahead and I'm just going to thicken up the lines a little bit. And, and I'm just going to like, once I'm finished with one side, I copy it, paste it, flip it over, and I just delete all the points that I don't need. And then I just finish closing up the shape. And then it, I'm just going to be doing this with a lot of the parts of the body because I want this to be a symmetrical design. This is going to be going on a t-shirt design. So I want it to be really nice and symmetrical, and I want it to lay out really nicely on a t-shirt. So like I said, I'm just tracing the image loosely, and I'm transferring it to the other side. If you can see, it doesn't really match up with the design in the bottom, but it's okay with me. Uh, the design, like the actual sketch, is just literally just a loose sketch. So right now, I'm just using a combination of lines that I, you can just use by using the pen tool. And I'm going to be using shapes, like circles and spheres and, you know, boxes and stuff like that in order to get the rest of the shapes that I need down, like in order to fill up the space that I need. Like if it's... If it calls for it, I'll just make a shape or I'll make a line, depending on what's easier for me to actually finish the shape. Whew. I am not used to talking this fast. Uh, let's see. Right there, I made the line a little bit thinner because that's going to not... That's going to designate where the ch color changes in his skin are going to go. Uh, I take the little toe that I did for the foot and I'm going to use those for the fingers as well. And it keeps the size consistent, so it keeps, you know, like a little bit other aspect of symmetry to it. Uh, I also start adding little tiny abouts of like hard shadows in order to bring like the depth. So the head is really big on Archie in this one. So I just make sure that it's like a little bit of a shadow, like a core shadow underneath the head. So it starts, you know, looking better. Uh, let's see. What am I? Oh, I'm going into the eye right there. And what you just saw right now, I'm using the width tool. It's a shift, a control W or shift W. What's one of those two? And it allows you to play with the thick and thin lines. So you're going to see me use that a lot when we start cleaning up the design. So as you can see, I'm doing really simple tracing, literally just using a very rough template of my you know design and then just eliminating everything that I don't need. Uh, whenever I need to make a line, I make the decision of either making the line or just making a shape. And you need to know the difference between those. And if you guys don't, you can look up my Illustrator tutorial, like how to ink an Illustrator. I have several of them. I think I have two or three of them. So you guys can like check them out and I'll put a link to them at the end of the uh, design or I'll try to like link it at the top. Uh, at this point, I made those little circles on the side so I would know exactly how far apart the design, like the eyes had to be from each other. So it would be, again, perfectly symmetrical. And then I'm just filling up the design, just doing the same techniques over and over and over until I actually get exactly what I need. Uh, 
right there to center the nose perfectly, I selected my, both of the eyes, I grouped them together, and then I centered the nose according to the actual eyes. So it would be right in the middle. Um, let's see, I'm going ahead and I'm just like making sure that the design looks nice and clean. I gotta make sure that there's no little open edges between the lines because that's going to help out a lot when we go into coloring and you'll see because it's really simple to do coloring in Illustrator. If you have nice clean line work, it's really, really, really easy to go in and just uh, color in kind of like a cookie cutter design, but you'll see in a little bit. And I'm just going in and adding little details that are missing. Uh, whatever I designates a change of color in the design, I am using a very, very, very thin line compared to the outline of the actual shape. And that will help with the depth of the actual character. Uh, I'm shifting right there. I shifted the design a little bit so I would have the tail nice and centered. And then I just trace a general idea of the tail. Uh, you'll see that I'm going to go wider on the bottom. Mostly because I want to like, I wanted to just give it like a little bit more perspective to it. I think I also changed the like curvature of the actual tail in order to like just make it more like a, like a wave. I thought that that looked a little bit better than the actual like just basic swirl that I had before. Woo. <laughs> okay, my throat is already getting dry. I am so not used to talking fast. Um, I start changing little tiny things so they don't intersect with each other. Like, because I don't like having lines that intersect with each other in the design. I think it creates a lot of tension when it comes down to the actual look of it. So I try to avoid tangents as much as possible. I'm just going in, I'm just drawing booby, which is really simple character. And I was trying to aim for like a very young look to both of the characters. Um, more so like baby as like baby versions of my actual designs. So, you know, I, th I thought it, they came out really cute. Uh, little tiny details just get added. I think I round off the edges of the actual line right there with the options within the line tool. And again, I'm just adding a slightly thinner line so I can designate where the color changes are going to go. And that's where the, like, the little path is, where he's flying. And I believe we are almost done with the actual line work. I oh, know, actually, I'm adding a shadow right there. So I make the circle and I'm just going to erase the part that is getting overlapped by using the Pathfinder tool on the right. And you need to learn how, like, like I said, if you haven't actually seen, and I'm saving right now. If you haven't seen any of my like, How to Ink and Illustrator videos, go back and watch them. It's like a 20 minute long video. Uh, and I walk you guys through most of the process and it's super simple. Like once, you, and then with that, you're able to, like if you are able to use Adobe Illustrator, it opens up a lot of work avenues for you guys because you can start doing t-shirt designs and a lot of different cool stuff. And I think we are getting close to getting to the final parts of the actual design. Uh, I'm going back in and this is where I'm using the width tool that I mentioned before. Uh, you can select the endpoints of the lines and then just bring them into a, a little point and then if you thicken up the line a little bit past that, you get really nice thick to thin lines really quickly too. So, I mean, it takes a little bit of time to actually get used to it, but once you do, ooh, it takes your drawings from looking like, and it's like from looking just kind of flat to giving it a lot of depth. And yeah, like it saves you a lot of time than, than having in and going to make every single point, you know, pointy. Uh, you'll see right there with the little drip, like drool, you know, if I bring it in a little bit, it just makes it so it looks thicker on the bottom and it gives it a little bit of depth. And those little tiny elements make a big difference when it comes down to a design. Uh, every single part that actually intersects goes into a nice little sharp point, like the tail, the, you know, a little bit thickness to the part, the bottom part of the tail, every single curvature. Uh, let's see what else uh, I'm just making sure at that point that the actual design looks good so whatever like is contrasting I make it a little bit thinner I am lining up everything really nice 
And let's see. Yeah, at this point, I'm just making little tiny elements like the flutter of the wings. Uh, let's see. And I just copy and paste whenever I need it. So at this point, I just, I'm just going in and doing the little heart at the top, which is, you know, really, really simple. If you just trace it, thicken up the lines, make sure that the curvature is like nice. It doesn't have to be perfect. Uh, actually, when the drawings look way too perfect, like way too like, per like, yeah, when they look too perfect, sometimes it like takes away from the actual like look of it. So that's why I'm not like completely like outrageously like that. Okay, what I'm doing right there, this is very important. Uh, I make a copy of my design, right? And let's pause this for a second. I'm going, I'm making the copy of the design and then I just drag it to the side just to have a very, like an old reference image of like uh, an old version of that design. And once you have that reference of that design, then if you ever need to go back and edit it, then you have that there. Then what I did with the new design, I selected it all and yeah, I selected it all. And then you go to edit or object, expand object. Just so, and then you click that twice and it's going to bring up this menu. What I'm doing after that is I'm just selecting the lines that I'm going to delete and I'm literally using the eraser tool to just erase the parts that are overlapping. Uh, that like that point, I'm just erasing a little bit to make it up to a little point, uh, adding tiny details that I might have missed, like little tiny core shadows in the ears. Mm, let's see what do, what else do I do? Oh, I was going to give it some thumbs. But I decided that it conflicted a little bit too much with the design. It would clutter it. So I just opted for not having that. At this point, I'm just like choosing where the highlights are going to be. I'm not necessarily going to add them yet, but I just wanted to have them like on the side so I can add them later. So I just click on my move them to the side. I'm going to be using the Pathfinder tool to be able to cut out that shape from the nose. So it has a little bit of a highlight. I give it a little bit of tooth so he looks a little bit cuter. And at that point, I make the canvas the right size that it's supposed to. I once again make a copy of it, drag it to the left, and then I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to select everything, combine it. And this is the really fun part. So as you can see, I actually just made a big shape. Like I selected every single, every single line that I had. I used the Pathfinder tool. Like I use this little section right here. It's going to literally cut your design like a cookie cutter. So at this point, you can go in with the white selection arrow right here, and then you can start selecting different colors and just start changing them at will. So it's super simple to start coloring. At this point, I'm just selecting all the parts that are going to be white. And then I just change it to white. And boom, all the colors that are supposed to be white are white. And then I just go in and do this selection process with every other color that I need to. So, you know, everything that's going to be a slightly different color, I'm just going to, you know, select it. And I'm just going to change it to whatever color I need. That's why you need super clean cut lines and lines that connect. If the lines aren't connecting, it just makes it really, really difficult. Another thing that I'm doing right here, I'm making the shape for the, the muzzle. It's going to be slightly different, but I didn't have a line to connect it. So I'm going to make the shape. I cut it, I control X, cut it, and then I paste it in front of the actual other shape. By You can select the shape and then click control F and then paste it in front. So let's see. And then like that's just going to be the process that I you know do most of the coloring. At this point, I grab the shapes that I was going to use as highlights. I turn them to white and I just drag them to wherever they're supposed to be. I adjust them a little bit, you know, make them look cool. I drag them again. I do the same copy and paste in front of the object. So it, you know, just pasted them there. It pastes them right there without like overlapping with the other shapes. Um, to give that effect right there, I just made a copy of those black shapes. I copied and pasted them in front of each other, and then I turned them to a light gray, and I erased what I didn't need. I'm going to do the same thing there. 
I made a white shape on top of the exact same shape and just erased some parts so it looks like it's like little like wetness. Mm, I changed the line work from black to a very, very, very dark pink uh, in order to give it a softer look to the design. Uh, sometimes you can get away without having black, completely black shape, like line work. And it, sometimes it looks cooler, especially if it's like, you know, like little baby shapes and it's supposed to be really soft. So I do that with everything that's black that doesn't have to be black. I change it to a slightly more like lighter color. Whew. And then we're going to start adding shadows. It's going to be the same thing. We're going to make a shape. We're going to select the shape with the white arrow tool. We're going to control copy, control F to paste it in front change it to the color that you want, and then erase what you don't need. So in this case, I'm going to select, I believe, okay, we're doing the heart. So I select the heart shape. No, not doing the heart. What am I doing next? What am I doing next? Okay, we're going to do the shadows and the actual ears. So we make, select the ears, we copy, copy and paste it in front with control F, and then we just erase what we don't need after changing it to a darker color, and then you have your cool shape. Do the same thing with the ears. Copy and paste in front, erase what you don't need. Uh, and then I just go around the whole body doing the same thing. So I just select the shape that I want, change it to, I copy and paste it in front, control copy, control F, and then I just go in with the eraser tool, shift E, and then I just erase what I don't need. Like I just literally, I did all this illustration with a mouse. Uh, so you don't really need any fancy tools for like doing stuff like this. Uh, this is the way that I learned how to ink when I didn't have a Cintiq. Because I still really loved having really clean line work, but I didn't have a Cintiq to be able to ink with it. So I used a computer mouse and just these techniques that I learned, that I kind of like learned from other artists or developed on my own. Ooh, so I just go in and do all of the shading in the same way, like just control, like cop, like select the shape, pa like paste the copy of it in front of it, change it into a darker shape, and erase what you don't need, and then you get left with like the negative, I mean, like the negative shadows there. Uh, or you can just add the shapes like I did there, like make the shape, then cut, like select it cut it out and paste it in front of the shape that you really need. And then it like lays it down really cool right next to it. So it's playing a lot with the arrangement of the actual shapes, like from front and back and like in front, behind. And once you get used to that and using the Pathfinder tool, it's incredibly easy to go in and just start making really cool designs like these. Ooh. So essentially, that's pretty much all it took to create this uh, the t-shirt design. Um, if you guys, you know, right now I'm just trying to play with some elements in the background and I do end up changing it for the final image. And you guys will see it in a second. But let me know if you guys enjoyed videos like this. Um, they're fun to do. Like it's fun trying to like explain everything or maybe if I should slow it down a little bit so you can explain it a little bit better. But if you guys enjoyed these videos and you guys actually like, you know, me going through the whole process of things like this, I can probably do more videos like this in the near future. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Here's the final image so you guys can take a look at it. Um, as you can see, I changed a few different things about it and, you know, but I think it came out pretty cool. It also is going to be on my T Public shop, which I'm going to be uploading a t-shirt design or two every week from this point on. So you guys can go check them out if you guys like them. Anything you guys buy from there goes directly to support my channel. And there's a bunch of stuff. You guys can get mugs, you guys can get t-shirts, hoodies, whatever. And if you guys do end up buying one and you contact me through Instagram and tag me in there, I will send you guys a cool little print, you know, a random print that's signed with a little doodle in the back or something. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys have a wonderful day. and. Let me know if you guys enjoy these videos. Uh, it's a different format for me, but if you guys enjoyed it, hope you guys have a good one, and I'll see you guys next time. Later.
Thank you guys for staying along through the whole video. Let me know if you guys enjoy these kinds of videos more than the others and I'll make sure to make some more like these. But if you guys want to see some more, click on the left or to the right, there's some more videos there. In the middle is the Patreon link if you guys want to support. Catch you guys next time.